So friends, I'm afraid I finally have to turn to Donald Trump's tax returns. Specifically, there's a picture emerging, and it's a picture that looks like, at best, some really ugly favoritism and cronyism at the IRS, and at worst, some deep governmental abuses. Let's talk about that, because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, I'll be honest with you. I've been holding off doing a video about the release of Donald Trump's tax returns. I'm not much of a tax guy, but it looks like this story is kind of reaching critical mass on the governmental corruption front. So let's take it on. But let's try to break this story into some bite-sized pieces. One. Based on the release of Donald Trump's tax returns, it looks like he very likely may have cheated on his taxes. I know, I know, you're shocked. Nobody could have seen this coming. Number two, during Donald Trump's presidency, his IRS commissioner, this guy, Charles Reddick, failed or refused to conduct the mandatory audits, the required reviews of Donald Trump's tax returns, which must, be re which must be done each and every year a president is in office. Charles Reddick flat out refused to do his job to scrutinize Donald Trump's tax returns. Three, while Charles Reddick was Donald Trump's IRS commissioner, he was earning hundreds of thousands of dollars off of Trump properties. Here's some of the new reporting. Let's start with the Washington Post. The many scandals Trump's tax records reveal. And that article begins, in 2020, President Donald Trump and Melania Trump paid no federal income taxes by claiming millions in dubious deductions and carrying over losses from previous years. Somehow, that's not the most scandalous detail to emerge following the House's four-year legal brawl to obtain Mr. Trump's tax returns. It turns out the Internal Revenue Service did not conduct, let alone complete, mandatory examinations of Mr. Trump's returns while he was president, despite its own internal policy from 1977 requiring such reviews, and the White House's claims that they were happening. In other words, friends, Donald Trump's repeated incessant claim that he couldn't release his tax returns while he was president because they were under audit, that was a lie a lie in which his IRS commissioner, Charles Reddick, was complicit. So what else do we know about Donald Trump's IRS commissioner, Charles Reddick, other than the fact that he didn't once correct Donald Trump's repeated lies, incessant lies, about how he couldn't possibly release his tax returns while he was in office because he was under audit each and every year. Well, here's some reporting from back in 2020 by an ethics watchdog organization, CREW, Citizens for Responsible Ethics in Washington. Here's what else we know about Charles Reddick. Headline, Trump's IRS chief has made hundreds of thousands from Trump properties while in office. And that article begins, Charles Reddick, the Trump-appointed IRS commissioner who has refused to release President Trump's tax returns, has made hundreds of thousands of dollars renting out Trump properties while in office, according to documents obtained by Crew. Last year, this was published in 2020, so that would be 2019, last year, 
Reddig said it was his decision whether to turn over Trump's tax returns to Congress under the supervision of Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin. An analysis of Reddig's personal financial disclosures for the last two years shows Reddig making $100,000 to $200,000 a year from two units at Trump International Waikiki. Trump made a detour to visit the property during a trip to Asia in his first year in office, a priceless promotional appearance for the business he still profits from as president. Reddick bought a 50% stake in the units in, in 2006, three years before the property opened, likely benefiting the future president whose company got 10% of total pre-sales. In other words, friends, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. So let's look at a basic timeline. In 2016, Charles Reddick authored an op-ed for Forbes defending Donald Trump's refusal to disclose his tax returns to the American voters while he was running for office. In 2018, Charles Reddick was, therefore, nominated by Donald Trump to be IRS commissioner. In 2019, Charles Reddick, together with Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, violated the law by refusing to turn over Donald Trump's tax returns to the House Ways and Means Committee. They refused to comply with the law, which said upon request from the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee for any person's tax returns, they shall be provided. Reddig and Mnuchin said, we don't care about the law. We are not turning over Donald Trump's tax returns. All the while, Charles Reddig is profiting from Trump properties. Let's go back to the Washington Post reporting. In April 2019, on the very day the committee, the House Ways and Means Committee, inquired about the status of mandatory presidential audits, which were not being conducted on Donald Trump as they should have been, on that very day the IRS notified Mr. Trump that his 2015 return would be examined. Yeah. So in other words, friends, they got caught. Reddick and Mnuchin got caught doing a favor, though, for Donald Trump. They were refusing to do the annual audits that were required of a president's tax returns. And the very day the House Ways and Means Committee called them on it, they contacted Trump and said, oh, we're going to look at your tax returns. But not to worry, because Charles Reddick has had a really compelling explanation for why the IRS, year after year, was failing to do the required audit on Donald Trump's tax returns. Mr. Trump's taxes were so complicated that it is not possible to obtain the resources available to examine all potential issues. In other words, even if the agency wanted to, which it didn't, it lacked the resources for a thorough review. Well, you know, it's funny. It's funny that they didn't have the resources to conduct the mandatory review of Donald Trump's tax returns, and yet somehow they had plenty of time and enough resources to conduct non-mandatory audits of guys like Jim Comey and Andy McCabe, Donald Trump's avowed enemies. Plenty of time and resources for those discretion or discretionary non-mandatory audits, but no time, no resources to audit the president's tax returns as the IRS was required to do. This is some IRS BS under the leadership of Charles Reddick and the supervision of Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin. You know, I've asked this question before, friends. How long do the American people have to suffer the indignity of this abject corruption in government, specifically under the Trump reign, under the Trump rule? And when will accountability come 
for guys like Rettig and Mnuchin, not to mention Donald Trump. It's got to come. We've got a clean house. We have to address it. There needs to be accountability because if there's not, the same thing is going to happen over and over and over again. And that is no kind of America. Because justice matters. I told you I didn't want to do a story about Donald Trump's taxes. Friends, as always, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.